Devin Jatho might be a real piece of work, but his editing style is viral gold. Beginner or intermediate editor, you're looking to take your work up a notch, you're in the right spot. Today I'm going to break down his secret sauce, his three-part visual hook, dynamic subtitles, and his unique storytelling format. You don't need to buy his courses. It's really easy and a great way to add some fire to your videos. Devin always kicks off with a text-based hook. Check out my clip for example. So my hook is, sell your animation sucks. Then he picks a power word, a key term he just highlights, like animations. Next, you need to drop in a stick graphic. Now it can illustrate your point, or it can be another influencer to add value to what you're saying. Or it can show a before and after of your solution. Like in my clip, I have a sad emoji because your animations suck. And then it splits to reveal an astonished emoji showing what my fix can deliver. Now I did this with a simple split transition right on the edit page. It's proof that sometimes the simplest effects provide the freshest results. Next up, subtitles. Now here's the deal. Devin says if subtitles get in the way of your message, drop them. That being said, he opts for bold fonts like Impact or Poppins. His subtitles usually pop on screen word by word, keeping it simple, crisp, and effective. Now Devin usually prefers to show visually what his message is. But if there's not a good way to show it visually, he will amp up his motion graphics. Kind of like what I did in my clip here. Let's go into Fusion and break this down. What I do, especially on my shorts, is I generate subtitles with snap captions. And then I'll go in and I'll pick certain parts that I want to accentuate or elevate. And that's basically what I did here. It was originally just a text plus. It was generated by snap captions. And I opened it up in Fusion. We did a few things to make it stand out a little bit more. So. Here's the original template. Here's the original template. And what I did is I made a character level styling modifier. I went in and changed the size of grab and it's offset. And then if you click in the text box again and hit character level styling one more time, it'll make another modifier. And that's how I offset and change the size of PNG. From there, we're running it through a background. If you didn't know this, you can run just about anything through a background and it'll put a gradient or whatever color background it is. So that's what we have here. I have gradient that I set up and I'm just running the template through the background and it takes on those colors. After that, I did a drop shadow. But what I did is I kicked the strength all the way up. I moved the drop distance almost down to zero and I turn the blur all the way down. So what you end up with is a copy of your text behind your text. And when it's not zoomed in, it gives it this 3D look. It's a quick way to add some depth without a whole lot of work. So then I grab another text plus node and added the next part of our caption, the A clip part. It's pretty much the same thing. Character level styling, made a modifier and just changed the color of the clip. And then again, we added a follower modifier, came into the shading tab, animated the opacity and the position and just set the delay to one frame, which honestly probably isn't needed. It's not really noticeable, but if you wanted to, you could have them animate one letter at a time using the follower modifier. After that, we have the real shadow fuse, which is free on the actor. It just gives it a little bit of a different shadow than the drop shadow. And you see, you really get some nice thick shadows that fan out. It's one of my favorite little fuses. After that, we just add a glow. We kick the glow size pretty far up. Left the glow alone, we just really wanted to fan out. Now, if you're like, yeah, but how do I know where to position these things? Just play around with it. Um, usually less is more. That's something I've had to learn the hard way. The simpler your action is, usually the more impact it has. You can go crazy and add like metal texture, put it in 3D, have it fly towards your head and hit the screen. But is all that going to have more impact than what we have now? Probably not. Is it cool? Yes, but it's not necessary. Also, Devin recommends that you put your subtitles right about chest level, somewhere around your chin. That way, the viewer doesn't have to choose whether to look at your face or the subtitles. And I know everyone wants word by word animation. The easiest thing to do is to get snap captions 1.6, generate your subtitles. Um, these here subtitles that you saw earlier are just snap beast. I changed the font, generated my subtitles. 
and then I went in and I made cuts at the ending of each word I say. And then what you do is you just go in to those text plus, like we were just talking about. You make a character level styling modifier and you highlight the word that's being spoken and change it to whatever color you want. And that's the way I prefer to do word by word animation. It gives you full control. Half the process is pretty much automated and you're good to go. All right, back to the video. Now, in my clip, I opted to use these subtitles here. If you want to get those, check out my Ko-Fi page. They'll be there for free, and you can explore other tools that might help you along the way. Bottom line, if your subtitles feel clunky or in the way, drop them. They're there to boost your message, not block it. Now, the secret sauce for getting views is that your videos need to deliver value. Whether it's entertaining or education, you need to hit them with a strong hook, show the problem, and then offer a solution. Now, if you're thinking you're just an editor, what can I really do? Remember, editing is storytelling. You control the narrative. A well-structured format not only keeps viewers hooked, but creates compelling content. Check out this raw clip. This is how it was sent. Hey, St. Louis. My name is Ryan. I'm a local videographer. And word on the street, you want some more clients. I mean, who doesn't want more clients? Now watch what happens after a few cuts and repositioning things. And word on the street, you want some more clients. I mean, who doesn't want more clients? Hey, St. Louis. My name is Ryan. I'm a local videographer. Tell me which hook you like better. Devin also always positions himself slightly above eye level. This shows the viewer that you're just a regular guy, but you know what you're talking about. You don't want to be too high, about too low. And every time a key point made, there's a change in subtitles, a transition, or something to really drive the point home. Remember, it's all about the three-part hook, clean subtitles that don't get in the way, and a killer hook conflict resolution storytelling format. These techniques work together to turn your video into viral gold. Drop a comment down below if you have any questions, and if you found this video helpful, like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, and why is Devin a jerk? And of course, we want good work for cheap. So whenever searching for a Facebook group, I would always try to target Philippine editors or Indian editors. No, no, no. I fucking hate editing. So from day one, I had a little guy that I knew from Fortnite previously, and he wanted to edit the videos to $5 a video. So I $5 a video? Yeah. Your quality is so good for $5 a video. Pay yourself a livable wage. If they could do it, they would.